Hi, this is Shweta from Clear Tax, and today I will speak about tax exemption on the maturity proceeds of life insurance. Life insurance is a time-tested product. The product was purchased by even our earlier generations, say our parents. It's purchased by our generation, and we also think it is valuable for our future generation. So I say life insurance is trusted. Why I say it is trusted is because it offers a lot of benefits. It offers a benefit of a life cover. It offers a benefit of a maturity value along with a bonus. It also offers tax deduction. And when you get the maturity proceeds, you can enjoy a tax exemption. Every individual can choose a life insurance plan based on the sum assured that they require, based on the term of the policy. Life insurance companies in India, both LIC as well as private insurers, they offer different types of plan based on the needs of the customer. The plan may be based on the age group of the customer and the need for the customer on the end purpose, whether it may be education or marriage, etc. of the children. However, when you choose a life cover plan, you need to also consider the tax implications of such plan. Under what circumstances can you claim a deduction and how you will be taxed when you receive the maturity proceeds. So let us consider the foremost aspect under tax implications, that is a deduction under Section 80C. So what is the deduction that you get? When you pay the premium each year, you may pay quarterly or may be, you may pay monthly or once in a year. The aggregate premium that you pay in a year, the entire premium qualifies for a deduction under Section 80C. Now, there are certain conditions for claiming this deduction. The fun, one of the critical conditions is that the premium should not exceed 10% of the sum assured. This applies to policies that are issued on or after 1st of April 2012. For earlier policies, the cap was 20%. In case the person you are seeking to cover has a disability or is, has a specified disease, then the cap is 15% of the sum assured. So once you meet the condition of the premium payment, the amount that you pay as premium will qualify as a tax deduction. The entire amount qualifies for a tax deduction subject to the overall limit of Rs 1.5 lakh under Section 80C. For example, if you take a policy with a sum assured of Rs 5 lakh and where your annual premium outgo is Rs 30,000, here, the premium payment, which is rupees 30,000, is less than 10% of the sum assured. So, in this case, the entire premium that you pay will qualify for a tax deduction. Do note that the sum assured will be the minimum amount that is assured under the policy. It will not include any premium which will be returned. It will also not include any bonus under the policy. You can pay a life insurance premium on a policy taken in in the name of yourself or in the name of your spouse or parents. You can also take a policy and pay the premium in the name of your married children or unmarried children. After speaking about the premium payment and the tax deduction that you can get, let us discuss the tax exemption on the maturity proceeds and in what situation the maturity proceeds can get taxed. We discuss one of the critical conditions for claiming deduction under Section 80C, which is the premium payment should not exceed 10% of the sum assured. The same condition will apply for claiming a tax exemption on the maturity proceeds. In case your premium payment does not exceed or it is within the 10% range, in such a case, whatever amount you receive on the maturity of the policy, the entire amount is tax exempt. However, if your premium payment is higher than 10%, then what amount you receive gets taxed to the extent of the difference between the amount that you receive on maturity as reduced by the aggregate premium payments. Also following the same condition of 10% of the sum assured, wherever the premium paid is greater than 10%, also a TDS will be applicable when the amount is paid on maturity to the person who is covered. The conditions for TDS are the amount that you receive on the maturity should be more than rupees 1 lakh and secondly, the TDS will be on the income component. The income component is the amount received on maturity as reduced by the aggregate premium payments. On the income component, the rate of TDS is 5%. Now, let us consider an example. The most common example where our TDS could be applicable will be a single premium policy. So, let us discuss the same. Let us consider Mr. Sandesh takes a policy from an insurance company with a maturity value of Rs. 1,10,000. Sandesh pays a single premium of Rs. 45,000 on 16 September 2013. The policy here is taken after 1st April 2012. So, hence the cap is with reference to 10% of the sum assured. So, in our case, 10% of the premium will work out to rupees 11,000. So, the premium paid, that is rupees 45,000, is greater than 10% of the sum assured. Here, the taxpayer will not be able to claim any tax exemption on the maturity of the policy. His income on the maturity gets taxed. So, let us understand what is his income. The income component is 
the amount received on maturity that is rupees 1 lakh 10000 reduced by rupees 45000 the premium paid by sandesh so the income component is rupees 65000 the tds year will be applicable first because the condition of payment is greater than rupees 1 lakh is satisfied second the premium paid is greater than 10% of the sum assured but the tds here is calculated on the income component as per the new tds rules the tds is 5% of 65000 which works out to rupees 3250 so here sandesh will receive the net amount that is rupees 1 lakh 10000 minus the tds amount of 3250 taxpayers may wonder how to claim the tds they can claim the tds when they are filing their income tax return for this purpose, they have to disclose the income from the maturity of the policy that is Rs. 65,000 as income from other sources and they can claim a credit of the TDS of Rs. 3,250 in our example against any tax payable by them. If In case there is no tax payable by the taxpayer, the entire amount can be claimed as a refund. Do note that in case it's a single premium policy and the premium amount is exceeding 10%, then at the time of claiming tax deduction, the tax deduction will be restricted to 10% of the sum assured. So in our example where Sandesh has paid Rs 45,000 as premium, in the year in which he made the payment, he can claim a reduction only up to Rs 11,000. The balance that is 45,000 minus 11,000, the balance amount is not qualifying for any kind of tax deduction. Understanding the tax implications will help you in planning your life insurance in a more tax efficient manner so that you can claim a complete exemption at the time of making the investment as well as at the time of claiming a maturity amount. That's all for today. Do like and share our videos and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.